Hallelujah. As your saints begin to worship, as we begin to lift our hands, as we lift our voice, Lord. Hallelujah, God, we come to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In need of, of your strength, of your power, God. We just want to run into that tower behind that shield, God. Hallelujah, God. If you could just renew our strength, Lord. If you can renew our mind, God. Can you give us our victory, our blessing today, Jesus? God, as we connect with you, God. Hallelujah. Give us our blessing, Lord. Restore us today. Hallelujah. Because we need you right now. In Jesus' name, have your will, have your way in this place. Come on, church. Can you give them a hand? Clap. Can you give them a praise, Jesus? Oh, we love you, Lord. We just want to rest in you, Jesus. We give it all to you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to give him our praise right now. We're just going to lift him up. We're going to lay it all on the line for the Lord. Hallelujah. Just let it move in this place. Hallelujah. Let's give him the praise. Hallelujah.
we serve a great God. Come on, it's his breath in our lungs. It's our reason for living. Hallelujah, it's the reason we're here. It's the reason we're alive, hallelujah, to pour out a praise, to give them a praise. Though you're struggling, though you're going through something, hallelujah, if you just begin to praise him, if you pour out your praise, if you do what you're meant to do, God will bless you. God will restore you. God will give you your victory. Oh, because we serve a great God, a great God, hallelujah, who is worthy of all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, can you just give him his praise right now? Come on, can you just lift your hands? Come on, can you lift your voice? Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, we praise you. We magnify you. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you give him a hand clap? Can you give him a praise right now? Hallelujah. Jesus, our pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, um, whenever we come to church, not every time, but sometimes I think to myself, I should save my voice a little bit for when I preach, when I teach. But something happens when the music begins to play. And I remember the scripture that says, if these should withhold their praise, the rocks will cry out. And when I feel that, when I think about that, I can't just close my mouth. And then I begin to feel the presence of God in this place. And I think of all the times that we've worshiped in this place, uh, in heat and in cold, amen, in, in few and in plenty. And I think about the goodness of God through all of it. Hallelujah. And I just begin to sing no matter what. Hallelujah. And even if my voice gets strained, it just doesn't matter because he's worthy of all of our praise. He's worthy of all the glory, all the honor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. How many are thankful unto God today? Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand, praise. Amen. Amen. Um, You know, as we implement some things uh, in October, we want to start like a first Wednesday, uh, a first Wednesday, uh, I forget what Sister Janet and I call it, but a first Wednesday where everybody's in the sanctuary. So we want to think about that. to put that in our mind. We had something snappy. First Wednesday. Anyway, you know what it is. We'll all be together. But in the meantime, how how many young people are glad you're going to go downstairs in Jesus' name? Amen. God bless you. Go ahead and go downstairs, young folks. Amen. Everyone else. Hallelujah. Amen. We're still talking about our theme. Uh, Why don't you come on up? Um, uh, brothers, uh, a little closer. Wow, we have more young people than I thought. <laughs> Amen. I'm not jealous. That That's not why we're doing First Wednesday. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and be seated. Uh, we're going to continue on with our theme uh, about God being our refuge. God being our refuge. And tonight, uh, I want to... I'm, I'm entitling this this uh, this lesson, Bless the Lord at All Times. Bless the Lord at All Times. And I want us to leverage what David learned um, in his fight with Saul, in his, um, in his dealings with Achish, uh, who was the Philistine, and, uh, and his journey from there to Moab. And back to the Lord and and see what we can learn from from David uh, tonight. Let's go to uh, first Samuel chapter 21 and verse 10. And then I want you also to have your. Uh, your your fingers there in uh, Psalm 34. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to. 
we're going to see what God taught uh, Brother David. Excuse me. We're going to see what David learned from his experience and how he poured that out. And I, I think, you know, it's one thing to read history, and it's another thing to see how it affected somebody. Right? We can look at what happened to David and say, well, you know, God helped him over this and helped him over that. Uh, but then to see how it, it, it comes out in the Psalms and the lessons he learned from it, I think is going to make a bigger impact on us. Amen. I can I can read what happens in First Samuel 21 and uh, I can just say, well, this happened and this happened and this is how he felt and Etc. And it would all be correct. But I think as we look at 1 Samuel 21 and as we index over into Psalm 34, which he wrote as a result, I believe God's going to bring something out in us. Amen. And, and I believe it's going to be an assurance that God is our refuge. Amen. And the, the truth that we're trying to learn here is the lesson. Bless the Lord at all times. Amen. God is worthy of praise in every situation. But for right now, we're just going to go to 1 Samuel 21, and we're going to read verses 10 through 15, and then we're going to read the first uh, five verses of chapter 22. And it says here, <clears throat> And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? And did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. Who else do we know who came from Gath? Anybody? Goliath, Goliath of Gath, amen, keep that in your mind, amen, and he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad, meaning crazy, in their hands, and scribble and scrabbled, excuse me, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard, and then said Achish unto his servants, lo, see ye, the man is mad? Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Achish is confused. He's like, why is he here? Then it says, verse 1, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with, with him about 400 men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, abide not in the hold, depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Moab. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to know that the big lesson in all of this is that God is worthy of praise in every situation. Amen. And if we can harness that praise, what that does for us is it acknowledges God's presence and his power beforehand. And when you do that, you unlock the prophetic. You unlock the, a faith in God 
that his promises are true now, that they will come in the future. And when you do that and it comes to pass, then your faith is bolstered. The, the faith is like strings, strings to the future. They're like rebar. How about that? They're like rebar. Amen. And, and they're rebar into the future. And then when it happens, when it comes to pass and God delivers us, it's like concrete on that rebar. Guess what? That concrete with that rebar in it is not going anywhere. Amen. That's what it is. So let's, let me read this for you. For as long as, this is a lesson connection. For as long as David could remember, he had always loved to praise the Lord. During the countless hours he had spent alone keeping and protecting his father's sheep, David had come to know the joy of God's presence and the thrill of God's power. David's experience with God in those lonely fields had made him a worshiper. One day while David was out in the fields, a messenger arrived. Come at once, Samuel, the prophet is calling for you. Samuel calling for him? David could hardly believe his ears. And when David arrived, the unthinkable happened. Samuel anointed David to be the next king of Israel. A shepherd would be king. It took a while for the shock to wear off, but when David was finally alone again, he praised God for such a blessing and such an honor. Time passed, and then another messenger came to David. This time, it was a message from the king. King Saul commands you to come at once to his court to play the lyre for him. King Saul calling for him? Well, how can that be? A lonely shepherd would now be a court musician and one step closer to the throne. David praised the Lord for such favor on his life. David continued to faithfully serve his father and his king, but then his father's tasks took him to the Valley of Elah. He went to take food to his brothers who were soldiers in Saul's army. But David heard a Philistine giant's boast and blasphemy. And God stirred up David's fighting spirit. With the blessing of his king, David took up, took up his sling and five smooth stones and ran toward the giant to do battle. To the shock of the other soldiers, David triumphed over the great Philistine warrior. Oh, how David praised God yet again for his power and his presence. David had known what it was like to praise God. But on the way back home after slaying Goliath, he heard what it was like to be praised. His young heart thumped loudly with pride when he heard the women sing his praise. At that moment of triumph, however, he never could have imagined he just made an enemy more fearsome and more lethal than Goliath. In facing this new enemy and the, the afflictions that followed, David would learn something about God and his faithfulness. And he would learn something about praise. David had always praised God in the good times. And now he would learn to praise God even in the bad times. Folks, we have got to learn to praise God at all times. Amen. Hallelujah. That, this is a lesson. This lesson is crucial for you and for me. And the reason being that uh, uh, sometimes we have long periods where, where things are just not going our way. And how is it that we stay faithful? And it's by praising God. And what we read here is that David, what we read in, in 1 Samuel, uh, after David had killed Goliath, King Saul could never get over his jealousy. Uh, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 18 and verse 7, you don't have to turn there if you don't want. But he heard the women singing, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And at that point, uh, a murderous seed was planted in Saul's spirit. You know, it was very interesting. Saul did not want to be king. Um, but, this, but once he heard David getting praised by the people, amen, what happened? All of a sudden, that seed got in him, and it began to bloom. And not very many days withstanding from there, 
And he picked up his spear and he threw it at David. And he tried to kill him. Can you imagine? At a banquet. And once it was indisputable that that's what he was trying to do, David took off. And Saul, or Jonathan, Saul's son, uh, warned David to flee. And in response, what did David do? He took off for Gath. He, he went, it was a very, um, there were five main cities for the Philistines, and Gath was one of them. And David took off from there. Um, isn't it interesting that Saul did not want to be king? Right? But once... David started getting praise over him. All of a sudden, Saul wanted to kill him. Why? Because Saul loved the praises of people. Saul started getting some good, or David started getting some good press. And all of a sudden, Saul didn't want to relinquish that. It, it points to us what happens when we live for people's praises. And isn't it interesting that in this day, with the pervasiveness of media, people have always wanted to be a star, right? Amen. They've always wanted to be a star. But now you can, you can be a star. You can, you can have a million followers on, on some Facebook or, or some, some media platform, and it can give you an outside sense of praise. And it can make you very wealthy. And that's a very addicting thing. And, but David here, he didn't realize his prominence. He didn't realize what was happening. Um, but if David thought he wasn't known by the, the, the people of Gath, the Philistines, he was mistaken. As soon as he gets there, some of Achish's people recognize him. Now remember, Goliath was from Gath. He didn't realize what an impression he had made on those people. And so there he was coming forward they, a, a, into Gath. And all of a sudden, they realized who he was. And they said, wow, this is a captain. He's even the king over the Israelites. Look in 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 11. It says this. Is not this David the king of the land? And did they not sing? One to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. They knew exactly who he was. And can I tell you something? People know exactly who you are. People know that you're children of the king. They might be spiritually dull and just have like a, a vague sense that there's something different about you. But people know who you are. How many can say amen to that? And so what did David do? So David uh, was gripped by fear. He thought, you know what? Achish is going to know who I am. He, he's going to figure out and he's going to kill me. And so what, what did he do? He, what came to mind is he went crazy. He just said, I'm going to act crazy. And this is what, how it, what it says in verse 13. Verse 13, this is in the NKJV. It says, he changed his behavior before them. Pretended madness in their hand, scratched on the doors of the gate, and let his saliva fall down on his beard. Now, what was that? What was that? That was quite a performance, and, and it was it was pretty convincing. David thought he was insane, and or excuse me, Achish thought he was insane, and he probably didn't need much convincing because here was David, this this man who killed Goliath. And he was going right into the heart of the Philistines. And they're thinking, he, he would have to be crazy to do this. And yet here's this performance. And so Achish threw him out of the city. Just threw him out. Now, David, stay with me. We're, gonna, we're going somewhere here. David didn't linger. David didn't linger. And he didn't li linger to see if Achish would change his mind. And so he got himself far away from Gath. I want you to look at Psalm 34. Look at Psalm 34. Keep your finger there in 1 Samuel. But look in Psalm 34. David composed Psalm 34 in response to what happened in Gath. And he said, 
he he basically he revealed that in in that experience in Gath, he hadn't relied on his ingenuity. He didn't rely on his acting skills. Amen. What he did was he called out to God in prayer and in worship. Okay, folks, in prayer and in worship. He played, notice, he, he did everything he could, right? Excuse me, he played the role well, but he knew God had set him free. And so he gave God all the credit for it. Look in uh, verse 4 of Psalm 34. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. This is in response. And this is why hooking Psalm 34 up with 1 Samuel 21 and 22 is so important because we see what his mind was in the midst of that historical event. He said, he heard me and delivered me from all my fear. Look at verse 7. He said, the angel of the Lord encampeth around all them that fear him. And deliver them. Whew. He, was he afraid of Achish? You bet he was. He killed his champion. You know what the champion was? The champion was the one who went before the whole nation. Goliath was 13 feet tall. Goliath was the man. He had a weaver's beam, a spear that was the weight of a we weaver's beam, which is like 34 pounds. Can you imagine this guy threw a spear that was 34 pounds? That's how big this guy was. And when you kill the champion, that's your moneymaker right there. Because what they would do in battle was they would send their champions out to fight. And that way thousands of people wouldn't get killed. They would just have the champions of the two armies fight and that would be it. And David killed their champion. So he was afraid of what was going to happen. Look at verse 17. He says, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all his, all, out of all their troubles. That's verse 17. So what does that suggest? If, if David, in the midst of all of that fear, if he reached out to God, what does that suggest to us? It tells us we need we need, uh, with every fiber of our being, when you and I are hurting because we're afraid of something that's happening at work, when something is tearing us down, come on, somebody, amen, I can't be the only one who's felt it, or when you've got something going on at home, when you've got people dying, people hurting, when you've got children who, who are in torment, when you've got all kinds of things going on. We've got to go to God in prayer. Amen. We know things are not going to last. Amen. We're old enough just to know that. Things, the tough times are not going to last. But the question is, how are we going to get through them? And especially in times of fear. Now, we, we can be thankful that we serve a God who knows our fears. Amen. Who hears our cries and delivers us from our troubles. We, we, we're glad about that. But we have an enemy who is not going to rest. First Peter chapter five and verse eight says with the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. We know that's true, but we know that our God is a present day reality. And it says in verse nine. It says the angel of the Lord, excuse me, it says, it says in verse 9, resist the enemy, steadfast in the faith. Resist the enemy, steadfast in the faith. When that resistance comes, to, comes by submitting ourselves to the will of God and the word of God. When we put our faith in God and submit to him, amen, in that submission, we resist the devil and he will flee. Notice, notice the progression, right? 
we stay steadfast in the faith. And when we do that, that's resistance. When, we're, when we stand steadfast in the faith and believe that God will deliver us, that, that is our resistance. Why? Because we do not resist flesh and blood. But principalities and powers against things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Our resistance is not, not fighting with a sword, but our resistance is in our faith toward God. Hallelujah. And so look at verse 17 again. Notice what it says. The righteous cries out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Folks, I cannot emphasize this enough. The Lord wants us to resist in faith. He wants us to pray. He wants us to call him out, if you will, by, re by resting on his promises. If we rest on his promises, my God, the world is available for us. Everyone is waiting on a government handout to save them. And look, it's, it's not a bad, it's, uh, I'm agnostic about those things, but they're not to save me, amen? Our, what's going to save us is the Lord, hallelujah. So, if we look in 1 Samuel 22 and verse 1, The Bible tells us that David fled from Gath and made his way to Adullam. Now, this cave of Adullam, it was, uh, it was southeast, about 10 miles southeast of Gath. So if you're looking at Israel, here's the Mediterranean. Jerusalem is up here. Gath is way down in the southwest corner. And then uh, Adullam is about 10 miles southeast. And it is about 10 miles um, it's kind of in a no man's land between the territories controlled by the Philistines and the territories controlled by Israel. Why is that important? How many times in, in the midst of trouble have you felt like in the middle of nowhere? Right? I mean, we are the people of God. We have no doubt about that. Somebody say amen. And yet, when we have these troubles... We kind of feel in the middle of nowhere. But there were plenty of caves that he could hide in. So he, David hi, hid in them. Now, when he hid in them, his family heard about it. And when his family heard about it, they were nervous about Saul. Because if Saul couldn't get to David, what was Saul going to do? He was going to take it out on the family. And so the family came. And then others heard. And all kinds of people uh, sought refuge. What does it say in verse 22? And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. He became uh, these 400 people of, 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 uh, in the kingdom came to David and David was their leader. They needed someone to lead them. Folks. God is going to bring people to you in the midst of your problems. Why? Because God trusts you. He trusts you. These were people who were ready for a change in their life. Are we going to be the leader or are we going to just sit on our, sit on our hands and, and, and wail? No, God wants us to be leaders. Remember what the word says. You are the head and not the tail. You are the head and not the tail. So when they came, David went to Moab. He went to Mizpah. And he, he, he asked the king for asylum. It says in verse 5 that, that at one point, the prophet Gad told him, get out of the land, go back to Judah. Now, before he went out into the wilderness, David was not sure that anybody was going to follow him. He, he, he was anointed the king. He was given a mission. But he didn't think that anybody was going to follow him. 
Now he had all his family and all these 400 people who would support him. Folks, at that point, God had given him the go-ahead. God sent him back to Judah. Any fear that he had was, was gone. It melted away. Uh, you need to know, when you're afraid, put your faith in God. Praise him. Lift him up. Give him prayer. Read his word. Believe on him. Amen. When you do, if you do that, you'll be too busy to fear. And God will begin to fulfill all of his promises in you. I mean, what a blessing it is to get a word from the Lord on time. Amen. And David got this. But if we're going to hear a word from the Lord, we have to calm all of the voices that doubt. There are going to be voices outside of us, but the loudest voice is going to be the voice in our ear, in our heart. But we can get a word from God if, we, if we're quiet in prayer. Amen. If we meditate on the scriptures, hold God to his promises. If we get that still, small voice that he speaks to us, if we listen for that, amen, we will get from God what we need, but we have to seek him. If we never seek him in prayer, folks, it's so easy to just sit there and worry, 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 to entertain ourselves, to distract our minds. Come on, somebody. A nice meal, a great sporting event a good documentary, whatever it is, we can distract ourselves. But God says, I want you to come to me. And if we do that, he will hold us up. Now, David was a man of action. He was, he was nobody. You saw how he got up with, with uh, Goliath. He got up and just went to action. But he did not take refuge in himself. The Bible lets us know that his eyes were continually on the Lord. And Psalm 34 says it right there in verse 1. Amen. And Let's go to verse chapter 34 and verse 1. Do you have it there? Can somebody read verse 30, chapter 34 and verse 1 of Psalms? will bless the Lord at all times. And look at verse 8. He, at the end of all of this, of this expounding, what does he say there? He says, he, he, he urges God's people to experience it for themselves. He says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusteth in him. That's what he's trying to get us to do, folks. David found out that God was near the brokenhearted. But if you're not seeking him, God's not going to speak. But when you seek him, he's right near that broken heart, that hurting heart. God can sustain us through, his, through our trials. And he's ready there waiting. Why? Because he's trying to build us up into a nation that depends on him. And that's what I mean about us waiting on the government for this, waiting on a new job for that. No, we've got to wait on God. Hallelujah. God will, will save us. He will deliver us even when we're crushed in our circumstances. But we have to seek after him. We have to call after him. Look in verse 17. Notice what it says. It says, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them. Out of all their troubles. Verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Listen folks. It's not enough for us just to be hurting. But our spirit has to be broken. And how does that happen? It happens when we cry out to God. When we admit that we have nothing left in the tank. Amen. Carrying on. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all of them. Whew. 
Notice the truth that David points out in verse 19. Many are the affliction of the righteousness. Of the righteous, excuse me. Listen, there's plenty of blessings in being one of God's children. But one of them is not that we will never have afflictions. We will have afflictions. And the world has afflictions. But the difference is we have God in the middle of it. Notice what it says here at the end. The Lord delivereth him out of them all. Folks, what have I said about holding God to his promises? Bring them up to him in prayer. Bring them up to him in prayer. Say, Lord, look what it says in Psalm 34 and verse 19. The Lord delivereth him out of them all. How many? All of them. All of them. And what does he say we should do in response? Back to verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Folks, that's the key. He starts in verse 1 telling you the lesson of all of it. I will bless the Lord at all times. And he did. He said, when I was going crazy in front of, in front of Achish, it wasn't a scheme. It wasn't acting. I, I did what everything that I could do. That's the good part. Amen? We need to do everything that we can do. But he says, I cried out to God. Folks, that's how we're going to get to the next level. What is the first thing that God does with us? When he pulls us out of the miry clay, he cleans us off, makes us all shiny. Some of us wear suits on a Sunday. Right? But that's, you don't have to have a suit on a Sunday, but you get my point. He makes us all shiny. We stand to our feet. David says in verse 2 and 3 of Psalm 34, he says, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Folks, that's what God wants for us. When we, when we cry out, when we magnify the Lord, what's going to happen? The humble will hear. Who are the humble? The other broken spirited, the other broken hearted people. And when they hear that, that's when we bring them to the Lord. God is looking for us to multiply. God is looking for us to reach out to a broken world, a world that is that is looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for their role models in even worse places, looking for their salvation in money. Oh, I'll be happy if I have this much money. I'll be happy if I have that much money. Folks, I remember when I was making six twenty-five dollars an hour. I was making six twenty-five an hour. I was far out earning any of my peers in college. But when I graduated from college, you know what I was making? Thirteen fifty peasants. Thirteen fifty, and I tell you what: when I was making thirteen fifty, I thought I'm good. It's never enough. It's never enough. And you know what? Whatever you're making, that's enough for you right there. Amen. If God's going to move us up, he'll move us up. The, the issue is being satisfied in God. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you. We ask you, God. 
Help us, Jesus, to internalize this lesson, to see what David did when he was in Gath. Lord, he was afraid of Saul. He ran to Gath. He went crazy in Gath, and then he ran to Moab. And then from Moab, God, you directed him back to the promised land. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the lessons that David learned. We thank you, God, for Psalm 34, which helps us see what happened with him. And we ask you, God, in your precious, precious name, help us, Lord, that we would have confidence in you, Jesus. Oh, God, that you would help us to bless the Lord at all times. Lord, that we would, that we would trust you to be our refuge, God. Help us, Jesus. Because, Lord, we need you. We need you more than anything, God. We need you right now, Jesus. Our society is falling apart. Lord, we're afraid for our children and our grandchildren. God, the fear of man will not be a snare for us. God, we will not, so we will not succumb to that, God. But we will hold you high, God. We will cry out in the midst of our troubles. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, help us, Jesus, to trust in you, God. Oh, Lord, we're asking you, Jesus. Lord, help us in our faith. Lord, help it to grow, Jesus. Help us, Lord, to depend on you. We hold you to your promises, God. You said you would deliver us from all of our enemies. You would deliver us from all of our issues. And God, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to... We want to, the world to know that you are our God. And Lord, that we are faithful. Lord, help us to make us be faithful. Supply our strength, Jesus. And we ask you this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand praise. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Hallelujah. Is there anybody who needs a, a prayer today? Amen. Hold on one second.